G'day legends, coming to you from Sweden actually, hence why there's a red Dalana horse up here and probably should point out because we're talking about gut health today, there's some uh, amazing mushrooms that grow in the Swedish wilderness, not the magic kind, these are fine, these are chanterelles, super, super healthy for you. Also growing here in the Swedish wilderness is an abundance of blueberries and raspberries and many other berries. But I'm not here to talk to you about how much I love Sweden because of what it does for my gut health. I'm here to talk to you a little bit more about gut health in general. Before we start, super, super grateful to have the opportunity to interact with the awesome 101 Tokens community. I think Benny's doing an amazing thing and I'm always grateful and proud to be able to share a little bit of information that I believe can help people make positive change in their lives. So what I'm going to do with you is share my screen and then bring up a bit of a presentation. I'll minimize me so I don't cover the actual slides. So what today is about, I'm just going to go over and scratch the surface of some things to do with gut health because it is such a deep topical area that we could go down the rabbit hole significantly, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to scratch the surface. I'm going to provide some valuable information to you guys. And then that will hopefully open the doors for you to start asking more questions. And I'll even give you the opportunity of how you can link more of that afterwards and, and find some of those answers. So this quote I really love, and I want to start with this because I'm a strong believer that you are a result of your beliefs. So when we talk about gut health, it's really important to understand it's going to challenge some of your beliefs with the changes that you need to make. Because the way that we grow up, the things that we learn, what we're exposed to through media, uh, what we're exposed to through promotional aspects of food pyramids, regardless of where you are in the world, and the foods that we quote unquote should eat, they are often uh, pushed by government and things like that. So when we talk about gut health, it's actually quite simple. And we talk about nourishing our gut health in terms of just eating normal foods and eliminating all the bad stuff, which we'll talk about. So it's important to understand your beliefs are not malleable and they can be molded. So you must understand that your beliefs become your thoughts. Your thoughts become your words. Your words become your actions. Your actions become your habits. Your habits become your values and your values become your destiny. It's so, so powerful to understand what Gandhi's talking about there. So what we're going to talk about with the gut-brain connection and gut health is not my area of full expertise, to be honest. I am not a doctor, and I don't pretend to play one on the internet. Yes, I stole that line from Tim Ferriss. I am not a functional medicine practitioner. I'm not a nutritionist and I'm not a dietitian. But I do work with highly regarded professionals and experts in these areas, mostly with Carl Hewen, who's a functional medicine practitioner. So a lot of the material in here today for you around gut health and the gut-brain connection is stuff that Carl and I work on together. So I've been working in high-performance sport my whole career as a performance therapist and a high performance coach. And I am upskilled in areas around emotional intelligence, mindset coaching, and neuro linguistic programming, and connecting all of that around physical, mental, and emotional well being. So, and the gut health plays a massive part in that. So, the, a lot of the information you get today is from Carl, and there's his details there if you want to reach out to Carl at any time. So it's been said for decades, for centuries, forever, that all disease begins in the gut. And that's why in the functional medicine world, they talk about your gut being your second brain, because we actually know there's a lot of proof around that your thoughts and feelings are linked from an emotional perspective, from a gut brain connection perspective. When we talk about the gut, we're not just talking about the stomach. So the stomach 
is part of it, obviously, but the gut is the whole gastrointestinal tract. So starting from the mouth and ending at the back anus. So, and everything in between and the microbiome and the microorganisms within that. And as it says here, research has found that an unhealthy gut can negatively impact our health, contributing towards obesity, diabetes, autoimmune disorders, hormonal imbalances, chronic fatigue, autism, depression, anxiety, joint and heart problems. I think this is really important to take note because there's a lot of things on here that people would not connect to their gut health. And especially when we look at the mental impressions of autism, depression, anxiety, hormone imbalances, it's really important to understand the research is proving and proving and proving over and over again how this is so well connected to our gut health. Now, we know that the brain sends signals all around the body to, to the muscles, to the heart, to the sending nerve signals all around. And it obviously sends signals to the gut and influences the gut. But what's also important to understand is that the gut sends so many signals to the brain and it influences the hormone balances, creating our mood and our behavior. So based on the health of the gut and the microbiome that we'll talk about, that sends signals to the brain to say whether, hey, there's some trouble going on down here, you better release some of those stress hormones, or whether it's sending signals to the brain to say, you know what, we're in pretty good balance. You can help us release some of those really helpful hormones and improve our mood and our behavior. So anything that affects the gut always affects the brain. There's so much proof and evidence around this now and the functional medicine world is absolutely booming because of the tests they're able to do now to prove this. And if you think about how you are as a person, you are a result, sorry, you are getting around as an emotional state or an energetic condition as I like to call it. And it's important to understand, so you're either happy, sad, joyful, grateful, resentful, angry, content, any of those states, you choose those states and your gut health contributes significantly. It's a two-way street. They impact on each other. So you must address your gut health, not just the food you eat, but your gut health in general. And that's vitally important to your mental health as well. And here's a big part of the reason why. So you've all heard of serotonin. It's the feel-good hormone. 95% of that feel-good hormone is created in the gut. That is unbelievably significant to how you feel as a person every minute of every day. Your mood is shaped by your food and your gut health. As it says here, quite literally, your gut is the epicenter of your mental and physical health. If you want better immunity, efficient digestion, improved clarity and balance, focus on rebuilding your gut health. And what does that mean in terms of rebuilding it? So I mentioned before that microbiome. When we talk about gut health, there's a lot of big words and the, it's, it's all relating to the microorganisms and the microbiome within the gut. There's symbiotic, there's dysbiotic. There's all these words that don't get too caught up in it or confused by it. Just understand that we have good bacteria and bad bacteria and they coexist in a unique way within our gut. Remember the gut starts at the mouth and finishes at the back anus and it's everything in between. So, your good bacteria and your bad bacteria is known as your gut flora. So when we talk about microbiome, symbiosis, dysbiosis, things like that, we're talking about the gut flora. Now, the, what they've come to understand and realize is that there's, we're, we're, we literally are more bacteria than we are human. 
because there's only 23, up to 23, 25,000 genes in the human genome. But in the human microbiome, there's over a million genes. So we have 10 times as many microbe cells as what we do as our human cells. So we need to fully, fully respect this to understand also that we share our life with 100 trillion organisms that create that microbiome that I was talking about. And they are vitally important for our survival and that they have to coexist together to allow our optimal living. So 10% human, 90% microbes. It starts to make sense why nourishing your gut health impacts the rest of your experience as a human. Now, I want you to look at this slide for a minute and just understand that these are some red flags. If you are experiencing any of these signs or symptoms, it's just a little bit of a red flag that it could be coming from your gut health. And some of them, in actual fact, would most definitely be coming from your gut health. So what, are this, what does it look like with the good bacteria and the bad bacteria in your gut? Are they coexisting well? Or from the stuff that you eat and drink, are you feeding more of the bad bacteria instead of getting rid of that and feeding the good bacteria? So there's some obvious ones on here that you would relate to your gut, like gas, bloating, abdominal discomfort, constipation, they, food intolerances. That all seems pretty normal to gut health. But once again, I'll point out, what about the brain fog or the difficulty focusing, poor memory, anxiety or anxiety, as it's referred to in 101 Tokens? And we all get anxiety depression, low mood states, all these things that are related to mental health, they actually have a direct correlation to gut health. So if you are experiencing some of these red flags, and I, I, can't, I can never guarantee anything, but I believe most of you would be experiencing many of them because we often do as humans, then start to think about it in terms of your gut health. Now, as I said, I'm not a nutritionist, I'm not a dietitian, I'm not a functional medicine practitioner, and I'm not going to tell you what you can and can't do. I'm certainly not going to tell you what you should and shouldn't eat and drink, but I'll just provide a little bit of information and some facts around what nourishes your good gut health and what disturbs it. And then I'll let you make the choices for yourself. So refined sugar is something that we know isn't good for us. And there's many reasons behind that. And one of them is, is because it disturbs the microbiome. It feeds the bad bacteria. So getting rid of hot refined sugar is an absolute must if you want to optimize your health. If you have any of those signs and symptoms on the other side. High fructose corn syrup is hidden in a lot of different foods, a lot of soft drinks, especially if you're in the United States. Hydrogenated vegetable oils. So we know that vegetable oils are, are toxic, but vegetables are healthy, right? So why aren't vegetable oils good for us? It's because the process that they go through to break it down and make it a vegetable oil, they fill it with bleach and chemicals. It is carcinogenic. Avoid things like your sunflower oils and your canola oils and take in extra virgin cold pressed olive oil and coconut oils. High caffeine consumption. I love coffee, but I know too much of it feeds the good bacteria. High alcohol consumption. We all love a bit of alcohol. I love having beers. I love my red wine and I always will drink a bit of it. But I also know that when I drink too much that I don't feel great. And there's many reasons behind that. And one is because it really fuels the bad bacteria. 
and it starts to throw everything out of whack. Deep fried foods, often because they're they're fried in those hydrogenated vegetable oils. So all of a sudden, you could have a delicious, nutritious broccoli, and if you deep fry it, you just kill all that nutrition within it. So deep fried foods and processed foods, anything processed and having all the E's within it. So if you look at a label and it's E this, E that, emulsifiers, all the things that help stabilize it and create a shelf life of eternity. (laughs) It's not good for your gut health. Even artificial sweeteners. So people think that putting stevia in their coffee and stevia in their food is good because it's not sugar. Let's just say it's a little bit better. But the artificial sweeteners are still feeding that bad bacteria. Same with food colorings and additives and anything like that. You're feeding the bad bacteria. So it's really important if you want to optimize your health and feel better. And for anyone who doesn't want to feel better, reach out to me because there might be a little bit of confusion there. Surely we all want to feel a bit better every day. So it's important to understand. This is just some of the things that disrupt a happy and healthy gut. So what about healthy foods? A lot of you would have heard of fermented foods. Now, these are amazing immune system boosters. It's not the only things that you need to eat though. So don't wipe out everything else and then only eat fermented foods. That's not what I'm saying. You will hate me if you do that because they do make you a bit gassy. They do make you, they do nourish your insides in a powerful way. So you don't overdose on these things, but you have them in your diet on a regular basis, meaning every day, if you want to nourish your gut health, your mental health and everything else. So some of these are sauerkraut. Now you can make this yourself really easy, but also quite cheap to buy, full of good bacteria. Buy the ones from the fridge though, not from the shelf. Kombucha is a fermented drink made from a scoby, a mushroom type thing. If you haven't heard of kombucha, check it out. Online, you can find so many details of how to make it yourself. In Australia, we're very lucky. It's sold everywhere these days and it's great for you. Kefir. So kefir is uh, similar to a yogurt. And actually here in Sweden, they get a lot of kefir, which is awesome. And kefir helps to nourish the gut health. Kimchi, very similar to sauerkraut, but it's a bit more potent. Natural yogurt, as opposed to the yogurts with the food colorings and the additives and the artificial sweeteners that you know disrupt your gut health. Miso soup is a Japanese type soup. It's really good. Pickles are another example because they go through that fermentation process. So the fermentation process creates all the food for your good bacteria. So you're feeding your good bacteria. Apple cider vinegar is another one to have in small doses that can be really good. So these are just some examples to start bringing in. So start eliminating those foods that disrupt the healthy and happy gut and start bringing in some foods like this. Now some natural foods, like I said, you don't want to live on all the fermented foods that include that that help to feed the good bacteria sweet potatoes as opposed to normal potatoes they're also much more nutritious pumpkin and squash bananas for fruit they help nourish the gut like with anything though you don't want to overdose on anything any food as humans we overeat all the time overconsume overeat with all these type of foods just because they're good for us it doesn't mean we need to eat them by the bucket loads It just means that these should be our snack options. These should be the vegetables that are on our plate. Plantains, which are green bananas. Now, I was in South America in 2016 after the Paralympics when I was working there and my gorgeous fiance and I were traveling around and we thought we found all these bananas and opened them up and I went to bite into it and almost broke my tooth because it says there that plantains are green bananas. However, they're not green on the outside. It just means that they're hard. So just be careful. If you're going to eat plantains, you have to fry them. I learned that the hard way. Onions and garlics, leeks and asparagus. So you probably have heard that these are good for your immune system. They nourish your gut health. 
mushrooms are a good choice. I pointed out some of the great chanterelle mushrooms behind me. Apples, oranges, and berries. Berries are significantly powerful. They carry a lot of antioxidants. They also have lower levels of fructose. And bone broth. Check out what bone broth is if you've never heard of it. It's when you boil down the bones and you chuck in some vegetables and everything, you boil down the bones so they're completely soft and they draw all the nourishment out from within the bones and you drink that liquid and it is really healthy. It is just full of nutrients, really, really powerful. You can make it your own on your own so cheaply, but you can also buy it in a lot of places now. Once again, if you're in Australia, it's becoming very, very popular. But I highly recommend you start to have bone broth on a, a every day on a regular basis, at least a few times a week, if you care about optimizing your health and being that little bit feeling that little bit better even. So before we go into the last slide, they're just some examples of ways to eliminate what can be causing problems and bringing in some foods and drinks that can start to significantly shift your health. Now, because like I said to you, I'm a mental strength training coach. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a functional medicine practitioner. I'm not a doctor. However, my skills are around optimizing your health holistically. And my mental strength training programs are about linking your physical, mental, and emotional well-being now you can see here if you want to be more of a mental frother you can have that opportunity in my programs and because because i love benny and because i love anything that he does and i'm extremely grateful to contribute to you guys you awesome legendary frothing community i'm giving you guys 25 percent off for my online program the mental strength training program now, I would highly recommend if you're interested in it, jump onto the website here, yourlifeofimpact.com forward slash coaching and all the info is on there. We're only running one more of these programs from mid-August. So jump in quickly before it fills up. And when you go into the payment page, you can see where you can use the code 101 tokens. So it'll ask if you have a discount code, just type that in and that will give you 25% off. Also, my details are here. If you have any questions at all about any of the gut health stuff we went through, about your mental health, your physical health, your emotional well-being, anything, or even if you just want to say, g'day, Robbo, I'm a frother and just wanted to chat to a frother. I love, I'm like Benny. I just love connecting with awesome humans. So reach out to me there on the email or follow the social media side, at Life for Excellence. Also, I have my podcast, which is a free resource to you guys. Tap into that, be inspired, learn heaps of information there. Now, we've just scraped the surface of the gut health stuff today. It can go much deeper down the rabbit hole. Like I said, I'd team up with Carl Hewen. We're bringing part of his stuff into these mental strength training programs. We've got other programs that we're doing now that you can see on the website. But I highly recommend if you're interested in nourishing or optimizing your health at all, check out the information here. Reach out to me. I'd be super grateful to connect. And also, if there's anything that you want to go through Benny with, you can. And we can make sure that we're... I'm just going to stop sharing the screen now. You can see me again and the mushrooms here. Yeah, just making sure that the communication is open and we can connect and be frothers together so if there's anything at all please do reach out thanks again for your time legends and keep being frothers